All right, Don, thank you for being here with us during the cruise. So can you introduce yourself to, to us European readers, who you are, what's your company, what's its history? Uh, my name is Don Stewart. I'm with Stewart Film Screen Corporation, a 60-year-old company uh, started by my grandfather, a little bit with the help of Walt Disney. We're uh, headquartered in Southern California, the uh, world capital of entertainment and also the aerospace industry. The uh, initial customers that we had were the movie studios back in the late 40s and the 50s. Uh, large uh, flagship theaters uh, in the 50s and the 60s and uh, aerospace companies in the uh, 60s which uh, taught us how to manufacture to military specifications and also the creative side from the studios and we merged them together and uh, our customer base taught us how to do high quality to specific specifications. Okay, so all about home theater, you know, because there, there, were, there must have been a point where, you know, the demand went from the movie theater to the home theaters. Well, we, uh, we weren't that smart a businessman where we said one morning that we're going to get in the home theater business. Back in the uh, 80s, the CRT projectors were the first pro uh, projectors that uh, were ending out in uh, people's homes. We did have a particular product that worked well with CRT projectors. It was uh, a screen called Ultramat 200. And uh, they kind of found us. And uh, the enthusiasts and also the projector company started using our screens in their trade show booths. So uh, we came up uh, after noticing we're selling it into this market. Then we formalized that and actually did a proactive uh, uh, program to get into home theater. And again, that was back in the 1980s. Uh, probably the first screen com company to recognize that market and uh, it'd probably be safe to say today that we, uh, uh, especially in the United States, have the market share of that and then uh, overseas in Europe uh, have a uh, certainly the high-end uh, market there. So those were in the CRT days, you know, so those were ice cream, I I against screens. So I guess, I guess nowadays with you know DLP projectors and bulb light projectors, you know, we 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 come from uh, from eigen screens to login screens. Yes, the uh, job of the screen maker in the past, ever since Thomas Edison uh, came out with the first projector, was just to get enough brightness back to the audience. Uh, the role the screen maker did today is changing. And the one thing that's never going to change is projectors are never going to project black. So therefore, the role of the screen maker today is to increase black levels. And uh, lumens are cheap today compared to they were. So our role has definitely has changed. Um, the newest thing seems to be, you know, constant 8 235 aspect ratio screen. So uh, two months ago during CDA Expo, you you blown us away, you know, with a curve perforated screen with a masking system. Can you elaborate about that? Well, curved screens are at least what we call single-axis curved screens are nothing new. Uh, professional cinemas have been using them for many, many, many years, since the 1950s that I know of. Uh, we are uh, actually curving the screen for a technical reason. One is when you put an anamorphic lens in front of an existing lens, we get a little bit of what we call pin cushion. So the screen is curved just enough to make a correction of the pin cushion. Uh, the other advantage is that it allows, uh, since we're having a wider screen in the same room now, be the same height, having the edge curved in slightly uh, keeps that light from spilling out onto the walls because it's fairly safe to say the screen is going to be closer to the wall uh, in that same room than if it was 16 by 9. Uh, it also allows the gain of the screen to bring it back to the audience. And quite frankly, uh, some people uh, come up and just said it kind of looks good and looks sexy. Uh, and uh, if, that is, if that's the truth, then that's just the icing on the cake here. So there are actual technical reasons to do this. It's just not, not just a cool factor, you know, like the same way it is in the theaters. There are so two technical reasons to, to do this. Yeah, okay. definitely technical reasons, and if it looks cool, then... Mm -hmm. That's even better. Okay, so done all about Europe. 
Are you all about the European market? And are you supposed to pay us a visit at the next ESC? The um, same way you did this year? Yeah, well, ISE will be in uh, Brussels this year, and we're looking forward to uh, being there. Quite frankly, uh, I'm a little disappointed. I did like Amsterdam last year. It's the uh, it's the Las Vegas of Europe, if we had to put in it that way. Yes. Uh, but yes, we will be back and uh, uh, in full force. Uh, I believe that there will be some uh, steward training at the uh, at the show, as we did last year. Now, uh, hopefully, it won't be quite as much snow as last year. Okay, so thank you. California boy. <laughs> That's great. I, I'm looking forward to it. And uh, thank you, Dan, for your time. Um, enjoy the Upset Cruise, same way we do. Yes, sir. So thank you. Thank Bye. you, Julian.